First of all, there's nothing we can do now to change the way you have felt during these past few days. And it truly breaks my heart to hear that you haven't enjoyed your stay. Makes me wonder if maybe I've failed as a host. No one's forcing you to stay. But I really hope you do, because today is going to be a great day. I promise you, today it's going to be great. You're listening to the Fun With Horror podcast with your hosts, Scotty and Andrew. Hi, beautiful horror family, friends. I don't know, other word adjectives? No, that's not right. <laughs> Nouns? <laughs> anyway, this is episode 77 <laughs> of Fun With Horror. The weekly horror movie review podcast in which Scotty and I take turns giving each other movies to watch, and then we discuss them the following week. We have two rules here at Fun With Horror. That is, whoever picks the next movie has to pick one they've never seen. Rule number two, we both have to watch it. Last pick was me, and I chose a very uplifting film Mm -hmm. called Speak No Evil, directed by Christian Taftrup and starring Morton Burian. Sitzel Siem Kosh, Freja Van Hewitt, and Karina Smolders. I think and it would be the sound of music of horror movies. I would agree. I would. Yeah. You know, well, some of the scenery, yes, but uh, yeah. It's got children in it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you're right. And there's, yeah, I was going to say something, but it might spoil something. So we'll, yeah, not, we'll, yet, we'll, not yet. We'll wait for that joke. Um, <laughs> uh, of course, please remember everyone to listen to the end of this podcast where we hear Scotty's pick for next week's movie. And also, if you have a moment, jump onto Apple uh, Podcasts, Spotify, even YouTube, whatever you want to do. And just if you wouldn't mind leaving us a nice review, uh, some, you know, five stars would be great. We'd appreciate it. Uh, and we love yeah, you. Just, just leave us some warm fuzzies. Yeah, we like it. It helps us feel good. All right. And sometimes Andrew, need Andrew needs a hug, everybody. So I give do. him a virtual hug. Yeah, I need it. I'm sleep deprived. Help me out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado. Hi, buddy. <laughs> hi. 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 Um, hi. Uh, uh, so how are you? <laughs> Good, man. I'm, I feel like I haven't talked to you in a long time. I know. I feel the same. I know. This is episode 77. A... Yeah, crazy. Which you surprised me because I had 76 wrote down because I think I forgot that Oh, Friday, Friday the 13th. 13th was actually 76. So Yeah, man. I made a boo-boo. Okay. Well, I I had to look on Buzz or uh, what we use. I think we can say Buzz Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I was uh, censoring oh, that. God. Don't say them. <laughs> don't don't say you use the internet. Um. Yeah, Buzzsprout. And, and no, it's Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout is great because they've been really good to us. So they have. Yeah, you're right. They're awesome. Yeah, they make us sound professional. That's you know, true. I mean, they have this audio balancer or whatever when you upload videos, and like we use like two dollar microphones, and they make <laughs> us sound like we know what we're doing. I know that you bought this microphone for me, and I know it was not two dollars, and I appreciate <laughs> it was, this. Gift. It was three fifty. <laughs> <laughs> with tax 398 <laughs> are you sure that's california tax or that's 402 yeah. <laughs> keeps going up <laughs> buddy buddy yeah man yeah did Hi. you by any chance watch the last of us no i have not watched it Ooh. but i've heard it's beautiful I forget. Do you have HBO right now? I do not have HBO right now. I'm waiting until the whole series is out and then I'm going to get it so I can. Okay. So I'll tell you what happens during every episode after I see them. Perfect. Hey, I played the game. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, I loved last. I haven't played the sequel, which I I know is also great, but I played the first one. I love the first game. Awesome. Awesome. Well, by the time this episode here releases, two episodes of The Last of Us will have aired. Dang. Wait, wait, on what, HBO. What night is it on? Sundays. Oh, nice. It's okay. the big Sunday show after now that House of the Dragon has been over for a little bit. Right. 
But I will what say think, I watched though? I watched the first episode, yeah. Yeah. I was blown away. Yeah, good. It's so good. And uh Mary loved it. I loved it. Yes. We both loved it. And like I definitely it does if you've played the game. Mm-hmm. It definitely makes you want to pick it up and play it again right then and there. Nice. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I look. I went on PlayStation. Even has like they knew that this would happen. They put a trial <laughs> of The Last of Us Part One. Brilliant. Up on the store so that you can play it for a little bit. You know, just to get that fix. Genius. And then spend all your hard earned cash on it. Well, and you really can't go wrong with Pedro Pascal. He's oh, the best. you cannot. He's you just cannot. the best. He's. The casting is so good. I love I it. I mean, I wasn't prepared for how good he is as Joel. And Bella Ramsey uh, is also great as Ellie. Um, awesome. Waiting for her to get more into like her scenes. Sure. Yeah. yeah they yeah. just they just introduced her, but man, she there's some of the aspects of Ellie that that she's already mm-hmm. nailing. That's really funny. Well, she her role will definitely get bigger if it follows the game. So she'll have some heavy duty scenes. For sure. Yes, she will. Oof. But that's about it. Like, uh, I thought of one more thing. Oh, what? What have you thought of, buddy? Tell I me. Just saw. I think it was today or yesterday. Did you see that Chucky season three got picked up? They're they're doing I another did season. Get, I did see it get picked up. I forgot yeah. to even. I forgot to post that in our Facebook group. I, I, yeah, yeah. When you said, did "Do you, we have anything?" This. Did you know we have a Facebook group? It's called the Fun with Horror Facebook group. On Facebook. Yeah, you know, I should probably change the name of it, by the way, because I did a search for it the other day, and there's other Facebook groups called Fun With Horror. Oh, no. <laughs> they're just not a podcast, you know, and they're, they're much smaller than we are. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really wish people had seen us right there. <laughs> they can imagine it. <laughs> they can. I think so. <laughs> Anyway, uh, oh. are you ready to stop speaking <laughs> evil? <laughs> I don't know how to segue into this movie. I don't know anything. I don't know how like, to do anything about this movie. So. No evil, hear no evil. Let's, uh, yeah, let's let's talk about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I want a toast to Italy, of course, to the food, of course, and to love. To love. To love. To love. Salute. Dear Louise, Bjorn and Agnes, how are you? We were just talking the other day how nice it was spending time with you this summer. We would love to invite you to come to visit us. Yeah, you made it! <laughs> Sorry for the mess. It's gonna get much worse. Come on! <laughs> Woo! Yeah! He's been cooking all day. He's making wild boar. This is for you. I'm a vegetarian. I insist. <laughs> I insist. <laughs> Hi, Abel. Abel has some difficulty speaking. He has what you call congenital aglossia, meaning basically he's born without a tongue. <laughs> He's only a child, for Christ's sake. You can't talk to him that way. What is wrong with you? We have a situation here. Someone left without saying goodbye. So many things have felt so wrong. Because we do things differently. No one's forcing you to stay, but I really hope you do, because today is going to be a great day. Okay, Andrew. Uh, I don't know what to say here. This is we're going to we're going (laughs) to. Okay, so everybody out there, um, we are about to spoil. Speak no evil. Yes. Uh, If you have not seen it and you want to. It is streaming on Shutter at this moment, at the time that we're recording this. Yes. It's also obviously available for purchase or rental. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, we're about to spoil the entire movie. Now, I will say this 
This is a movie that is better not knowing anything going in. Absolutely. But at the same time, it's also good knowing that there are very disturbing elements to this movie. Yeah. Very good. Uh, So if you are very easily triggered by things, you might want to go online and look up trigger warnings before you watch this movie. Yeah. Unless you've already seen it, in which case, ignore everything I'm saying and then (laughs) (laughs) stick around. (laughs) But, Andrew, it is time for you (laughs) to uh, give us a three minute recap of this of this wonderful movie. Oh, boy. All right. Are you ready? ready? Oh, I I, I think I'm very, very ready for this. I'm very curious about this. So, oh, Oh, gosh. Oh, man. (laughs) Oh, boy. All right. And this, this whole episode, this whole episode is going to be us going, oh, here we go. Oh, oh for geez. sure, man. Oh, oh my gosh. man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, go ahead, scene, buddy. Though. All right. So our story <laughs> begins with wait. Bjorn. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, what? we got to lead you in. Here we go. Oh. I got you for three minutes. Three minutes of free time. Now go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> love you. Bjorn and Luis uh, and their daughter Agnes, they're a Danish couple and they go on vacation and they meet up, uh, they meet a family there Patrick and Karen and their son Ab- uh, Abel or Abel uh, and they're a Dutch family uh, they hit it off, they have a great time it's a lot of fun, then they both, both uh, families go back home uh, Patrick invites them up to their house for a get together later on and eventually they decide to go and, go, to go and visit uh, when they go there though Things are awkward. Um, they're just, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember her name. Louise is a vegetarian and like Patrick essentially makes her eat meat. There's all these things that are just uncomfortable and awkward. And um, at one point they even go out to dinner and they're expecting to take their daughter and they say, nope, no, no kids allowed. We're going to leave our kids with this guy that you've never met before. And we're going to go have fun at dinner. And they eventually leave and it's, an awkward dinner, very uncomfortable. And on the ride home, he's the uh, Patrick is drunk and loud. And it's just, they're asking him to stop. They eventually uh, go to bed and they have a good time together. Uh, that is Bjorn and Luis. And their daughter's banging on their door wanting to come in. But because they're having a good time, Patrick actually takes their daughter to his room with his wife, where eventually Luis gets out of bed and goes and sees that their daughter is in bed with the parents. And boy, gosh, Patrick is naked. Um, and Agnes, mind you, is a young, very young girl. Ah, yuck, yuck. Anyway, uh, they decide, let's get the heck out of here. So they leave. Uh, Agnes is like, oh, no, I left my stuffed rabbit there. And so they have to go back. Uh, eventually, the family's like, Patrick and Karen are like, hey, why'd you guys go? And they talk about it. And they say, we'll be good. We'll be good. We're so sorry. So they stay a little bit longer. Again, things get uncomfortable and awkward. I didn't mention at the beginning, but Abel has a uh, disability where he actually has was born with no tongue. Wink. Um, anyway, at one point, <laughs> sorry, uh, Bjorn is out in their shed kind of behind the house where he sees all these pictures of families and luggage and he realizes something's off. He goes downstairs and sees that Abel is actually drowned in the pool and he takes his family in the car and they leave, but their car breaks down. He eventually walks away trying to get help. Patrick shows up and says, let's get in the car with you and we'll help you out. Well, they go in the car. Uh, and of course, uh, bad things happen where Karen and Patrick essentially hold the parents down. They're the guy that babysat their daughter comes to into play and holds their daughter, Agnes, and they cut her tongue out and he kidnaps her. Uh, eventually, Patrick and Karen take out uh, Bjorn and Luis and say, go down to this rock quarry, get completely naked. They do. Then they throw rocks and stone them to death. The movie ends uh, with uh, Patrick and Karen and their quote unquote new daughter, Agnes, who without a tongue, and they're going to go start the process over again, find a new family, take a new kid. That's the movie. <laughs> How was that? <sighs> well, you made it under three minutes. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I, there's a lot. Congrats, yeah, I, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah, you, you're the best. Stop it. That was hard. I had not practiced that. <laughs> No, that was really good. That was one okay. of your best three minute recaps for <laughs> Thanks. what did you think of this movie? I'm gonna ask, I'm just getting into it. Yeah, jump right in. So this is it's a very this is a I'm gonna I'm trying to let's figure. let's say this first before before <laughs> yeah. you answer this. Yes. A lot of people mm-hmm. really like this is on a lot of top ten lists. Yeah. 
for yep. the end of the year, people that saw it. Yep. Um, I had heard that it was a little disturbing. In fact, I gave you an out at one you point. Did. Yes. Yeah. Knowing that you're a father who's busy with children and not knowing what. OK. And also yeah. not knowing what the hell the movie was about. I had just yeah. heard that this was a disturbing movie. Yes. And I was like, Andrew, I've heard this. We haven't recorded Smile yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Our last episode. Do you want you? You can change your movie. And you're like, nope, I'm sticking with it. Yep. So there you Curiosity, go. Curiosity, <laughs> ma'am. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I will. Say, this movie is is extremely well made. It is a well crafted movie. I enjoyed this movie, and I say that. Uh, I'm. I, it's really hard for me to say like I liked this movie because I did, but there are parts that are very dark and very disturbing, and I it's hard like it's hard to be like i love those parts it, you, you don't love the parts like they're dark and disturbing but the movie itself is i think kind of an excellent movie mm. it's really well made but again there you gotta be ready for some messed up stuff i am and actually I, very surprised to hear you say that really yeah i did not i did not predict this answer from you right on it, and it's hard to be like it's a great movie but it, it's it is a very well-made movie. I mean, it really is, but there are really dark elements. So Which we, we can talk describe. about. Yeah. What about you, though? Wait, what did you, what'd you think? I've been on a roller coaster journey this weekend after watching oh. this movie. <laughs> I'll oh, be no. honest. When I, when I watched this movie and I, mm -hmm. I finished it, mm -hmm. I was mad. And yeah. there was a part of me that was like, ready to call you and say should we even do a podcast about this movie wow yeah because i was just so disgusted yeah. and i was angry at the movie mm -hmm. uh i like normally i look forward like when i watch a movie that you picked mm -hmm. i start imagining how you'll do the three minute recap and how you'll yeah. over explain the very first scene of the movie <laughs> But yep. I have fun thinking of your three minute recap. Right. And this time I I did not have fun thinking. I, I was like, do you even want to do a three minute recap for this movie? Yeah. It's I rough. was mad. But but yes, I'm not finished here because afterwards. I started thinking about it more. Mm -hmm. uh, and my just to just to make this shorter. At this moment, I mm -hmm. do think it is a brilliant movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm with you. I think, I think this movie is pretty terrific in mm -hmm. the way it's made. There is still a huge one, huge problem I have with it. Oh, okay. That I think could have been done very much differently without lessening the impact of the movie. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe, but, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this movie is very dark. Yes. And if you think about it too much, it goes to even darker places than the movie even talks about yeah but yeah this is a movie that really it really makes a person think and there's a huge huge lesson and message underneath everything Ooh. so I'm excited. i think i think we should get into it a little yeah, bit i'm excited to kind of dive into this with you man because i know you I let me before we jump into more darkness, let me just sing your praises. You do so much research on these and you're so good at this, buddy. So I, I get excited just to do this one to hang oh. out with you. But I really do get excited because I learn something every time. I'm like, <laughs> oh, whoa, I didn't know that. So I'm well, excited. Did you by any chance? Did you have time to read the article? I did not. So that's, that's why fine. I'm excited to hear. <laughs> I read it. I read it for us. I watched interviews with the director um, because I wanted to know more. I wanted to know yeah. um, what what the point of the movie was mm -hmm. and um ziggy Idiot. is behind me on the chair ziggy the horror cat ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and uh now for once andrew can see him since we're on zoom now yay but anyway um yeah you know it's it's really interesting i actually had a twitter back and forth with somebody today who uh, he tweeted something about wanting people to tell him what they dislike about Marvel these days. Yeah. And so I, I, 
quote treated uh, quote retweeted him <laughs> and i said how about we talk about what we love about things yeah. instead of inviting people to complain about things and he said he answered me he was very cool about it nice. but he answered me and he said he said look i love marvel i just want to know i'm curious as to what the other ha- other side thinks hmm. interesting i'm not like that when i like something right i'm like that when i don't like something Mm, interesting. Because yeah, yeah. when I don't like something and I know that other people really do, I'm curious mm-hmm. about why they liked it. I get that. Yep. I this totally movie, this movie was like that for me. Totally fair. So I'm going to because I'm curious as to what you thought. I'm going <laughs> to jump to the end of the movie. Oof, OK, because the whole movie is uncomfortable. But then we get to that that last that last act. And buddy. I'll be honest, buddy. Yeah, I, I was, I did not think I was going to rewatch this movie for mm-hmm. to take notes. I did, but mm-hmm. I didn't finish it. I purposely turned it off about thirty minutes before the end of the movie. Yep, because that's <clears throat> that's about the time that the movie starts getting really uncomfortable. Yes. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right about the time where Bjorn finds the, finds the pictures. Yep. And stuff. Yep. yep. My big problem with the movie is that I know this was on purpose. The director did not want to hold back, Mm -hmm. but there's the scene in the car with Agnes Mm -hmm. where they cut off her tongue. Yeah. And it was graphic. They showed it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, special effects, but they showed it and I hated it and I still hate it. Nothing. Nothing about how I feel about the rest of the movie has changed my thoughts about that. I don't think that needed to be done. I agree. We know that Abel didn't have a tongue. Right. Anybody that knows that this is a horror movie probably had a feeling that he wasn't really born with a deformity. Yep. 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 All we needed to see was uh, the the babysitter guy, and I have his name written down. I forget. It's uh, a... Yeah. It's a uh, Muhajid. Muhajid. Mm-hmm. We see him. All we need to see is him take her away. Mm-hmm. And then we know what's going to happen to yep. her. Yep. And then we see her at the end without a tongue, not speaking. Yep. We know what happened to her. We don't need to see it. We don't need to see that trauma happen to a little girl. Agreed. Yep. You know, it's it's kind of the same thing as hurting pets in movies. I don't yep. need to see little it's weird. I applaud sometimes when a movie has the guts to right. kill off yeah. a little kid, but something this dark and brutal, yeah, and this real, yeah, not fun. It's not yeah, like a fun no. at all. It's not fun, and I don't applaud it. I don't applaud the director for being brave right. about it. I completely agree. So, in fact, this is the first movie in our podcast, I believe, that I looked away. Oh. I actually didn't watch that part. I saw the I saw it start and then I went nope nope nope. And I That's very in. interesting. That's so interesting that you say that because I was I actually wrote down that I think this is possibly the most disturbing depressing movie that we've covered on the podcast so far and we've done the sadness yeah. in, inside. Oh gosh, yeah. Oh my god. I mean inside is depressing and it's brutal, but there's there's a just a basic horror movie thrilling aspect to that movie Mm -hmm. that just makes it a little less disturbing than this one. Yep. Yeah. And it may be more brutal and it may be more gory, but yeah. Something about this. And I, I actually thought that same thing that you mentioned where it was, excuse me, where you said, you know, seeing an animal killed Mm. or tortured, you know, I was, it's the same thing. I I totally agreed with you. I was like, some things just don't need to be shown. Yeah. We don't need to see an animal get killed we don't need to see children get hurt you know right i mean we just don't need it um yeah so i I'm, totally agree <laughs> and i i thought about you big time i don't know like, i i'm very protective over you oh i love you buddy as my friend and i see sometimes i see something brutal in a movie and i forget that you can handle yourself with these movies mm-hmm. and i just get worried i get worried that you're gonna be curled up in a little ball and so, or something i don't know well like i said i mean i had to look away at that part and it, and seeing abel's body drowned i went Ugh. 
I don't like that either. And I know we hadn't seen, we didn't see him drown, but we see yeah. a little boy's body upside down. So you don't see a face. So it's a little, we bit... don't even, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to po- posit a theory here. Oh, okay. Please. I'm not even sure he drowned. I don't know. Uh-huh. It's possible, but totally fair. I yep. just had this dark thought that when that night when Bjorn is sitting in bed awake mm-hmm. and he hears Abel making noises and he sees, oh, uh, yeah. Patrick go down the hallway and hears him telling Abel to stop. And then Abel stops. And I had this dark thought that Bjorn basically just heard Abel die. Oh gosh. And then he was just, he was just putting, you know, he just put Abel in the pool to right. kind of get rid of him until they had time to bury him or something. I don't know. Right. Well, I didn't think he drowned like he did. It, I thought, you know, the parents or not parents, but no, yeah, yeah, no, I know know, they did. That's what I thought. That's what I I knew that you were thinking that. Yeah. Yeah. That they, that they drowned him. Right. 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 Of course. Um, Yeah. Um, yeah. So now that we've talked about that. Yes. (laughs) Uh, let's, I guess we can get into what the brilliance of this movie. Yes. Um, first of all, some behind the scenes. Yes. This movie was filmed during the pandemic. Oh, really? It was a seven-week shoot that they shot throughout an entire year. It took them a whole year to shoot those seven weeks of footage because they had to keep stopping and starting. Wow. I'm Wow. I'm surprised yeah. the kids didn't... They did a good job at not making yeah. them, you know, look <laughs> old, young, old, young. You know what I mean? <laughs> Depending yeah. on how it was filmed. So that's impressive. That's very interesting. And as a matter of fact, according to the director, uh, mm-hmm. the house at one point that they that they live in or the main where the main bulk of the movie takes place. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, that house was destroyed during the filming. So no way. Christian Tuftrup. Tuftrup. Yes. Christian Tuftrup. I looked up all these names and most of them aren't that difficult, you know? Yeah. But yeah, um, he was very interesting to listen to. Now here, how about this one, buddy? Okay, this is another warning for everybody oh, out there. Okay. And I meant to say this during the main spoiler warning. If you have not seen The Strangers, uh-huh. maybe go watch that movie before uh, before going further with this podcast. Because I'm, I'm going to spoil The Strangers a little bit. Okay. The Strangers with Liv Tyler, Scott Speedman. Mm-hmm. I love Great movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here's your warning. Three, two, one. The ending. Why oh. are you doing this? There's the part where they say, why are you doing this? Because you were And he home. says, Be- no. Well, <laughs> that's The well, Strangers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but in this movie, he says, yes. because you let me. Right. Yes. So here's the thing. That. That clues you in to the whole point of this entire movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it also, the it was such a close homage, quote unquote, mm-hmm. or ripoff. I'm not sure. Right. Of the strangers final lines. Right. That it was so, it was distracting to me. It's fair. Yeah. Yep, did yep. you, did you catch that at all? Did you think of the strangers when they said that? I didn't actually, but I, I do now that I think about it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> Yeah. That makes sense. Because that's like the, the I mean, it's not a huge spoiler for Strangers because I think it was on the poster. Right. But it was a big line. Like, that was what people yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. uh, let's see. What do I have? I have. So I have a whole bunch of stuff written down about the movie. Oh, yeah. Before we get into the movie, but about <laughs> the movie. Um, <laughs> uh, the movie poster. Have you seen, did you see the movie poster for this movie? Uh-uh. It's, it's it a up? picture. Yeah, sure. Yeah, look mm-hmm. at it while I'm talking about it. It's a picture of the car. Mm-hmm. And oh, they're, yeah. they're, it's uh, Bjorn and Luis inside the car, like yelling outside it. But yep. the car's by itself. It looks like it's deserted or something, like they're right, trapped yeah. in the car. Yeah. But man, after you see the movie, you realize that they are yelling after Muhajid who has Agnes oh, and it's like that poster is now very dark to me. Oh, that's horrible. Um, oh, gosh. <laughs> during 
festivals and such when people first started seeing this movie. Obviously, there's a lot of people that were um, born on the movie that were mad. Mm-hmm. You know, they mm-hmm. thought that the movie went too far. Right. The director, Christian, he said himself that he was very happy with this movie not pleasing everybody. Mm. Which, I mean, any director should feel like that about a movie. But right. Right. The fact that he specifically said that, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's nice. Nice yeah. to know that, that he knew that this was going to divide people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Oh, this is, uh, and this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Big, big, Yay. big thing, buddy. Lay it on me, man. I'm ready. So I texted you after I started watching the movie about mm-hmm. the subtitles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> so it was very interesting because I had this movie on Apple. Mm-hmm. This movie was also is also available on Shutter. Mm-hmm. When I started watching it on on Apple, which I assume that's where you watched it, I actually watched it on Shutter. I had Shutter did? from something else, so I watched it on Shutter. Did you physically turn the subtitles off? So I got to thinking about it. I think I did have the subtitles on. Okay, yeah, I think I did because after you said it, I was like, wait, and I couldn't remember. But I think I and then I thought about it a little more, and I think I did. Because I was thrown at the beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. I actually had subtitles off, but there were still subtitles. There were subtitles when they were speaking in English. Huh. And I was very confused. And then it was just subtitles no matter what they were saying, right? Okay. So yeah, yeah. I put the subtitles on automatic and all subtitles went away. Weird. And I put the subtitles on just like on, like mm-hmm. always on. And right. all of a sudden, I'm seeing all the like, you know, dancing in the street or whatever uh, right. makes grunting noise. Oh, gotcha! <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I went to I went to Shutter, mm-hmm. and I checked, and sure enough, Shutter had subtitles during the English speaking parts too. Okay. So that Weird. brought up that brought up something very, uh, very cool about the movie. Because I then I went and I turned subtitles off so that I had subtitles during the English and the Danish parts. Uh huh. But here's the cool thing is that when they get to Patrick and Karen's house, uh huh. Whenever Patrick and Karen speak in Dutch, yep. There's no subtitles. Interesting. So you everything that Bjorn and Karen. Uh, Bjorn and Louise understand mm-hmm. you have subtitles for English and and Danish. Whoa! But you don't get to you don't get to understand what they don't understand. So you have no idea what Patrick and Karen say to each other when oh, they speak that's Dutch. Trippy. I thought that was very cool. That's very cool. I like that. Um, Ooh, that's cool. Okay, what do you think about the stoning scene? <laughs> I mean, we, so this is, I was going to ask you about this mm-hmm. a little bit ago. I'm kind of all over the place. No, that's the, hey, that's, that's because I, I hated both scenes the first mm-hmm. time I saw it. Mm-hmm. After I thought about it, I didn't hate the stoning scene. I thought that was earned and I thought that was a very brutal scene. Yeah, it was well, for sure brutal. But, Oof. and I don't want to watch it again. No, yeah, no. <laughs> because the thing with that scene is that it's not just, the stoning itself Mm -hmm. it's knowing just feeling so heartbroken for these people yeah yeah i mean patrick and karen are pure evil yeah oh yeah and we don't we may not not even know like because then you you start thinking to yourself why why do they do this right why do they kidnap these children and right rotate them out and then you think about mu hajid and what his part in it is. And you just yep. don't want to go there. You know, yep. you don't yep. want to go to those dark places. Right. But man, what they go through and then they have that. Like, it's it's kind of beautiful. You know, they're they're stripped naked. Mm-hmm. They go down into the rock quarry and they have that moment where it's just they love each other. And right. There's a oh, yeah. there's that tender moment where they just hold each other. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere, like the first rock hits Louise in the head, yeah. and you're just like, Whoa. "Yeah." And they don't hold back on those either. I mean, no, you, you no. see them hit, and you're it hurts. That yeah, that physically hurt me. That scene, every rock, I was like, "Gosh, yeah, yeah big yeah, time." Yeah. And then, as far as we know, they just leave them there. That's what I I figured. Yeah, 
I mean, that's how that's how the what the movie implies when you just see their like the next morning and their bodies are just laying there and it's just yeah. like oh, so Gosh. dark. But again, I thought that was okay. Mm-hmm. It's just but yeah, it's just go ahead. No, I was just gonna say about heartbreaking because I mean it's like these two yeah. are just they're done. We've done. We're done. They took our daughter. We have nothing right now. We're just done. I tell you, watching the movie a second time, the entire movie mm-hmm. is just heartbreaking. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. because let's—I mean, let's get into it. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the whole point of the movie, and I know you identify with it as much as I do. Mm-hmm. The whole movie is about how far we go, not to offend somebody. Yes, and to please other people, and to not say no to people, yeah. and to save face as i think i think the director put it that way in in one of his articles um and it's just sad like you see it from the very beginning you see you see how cuz uh patrick singles bjorn out at the vacation retreat mm-hmm. obviously i think they single them out because they have the little girl but then you right. see these little these little hints of of Bjorn's personality. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. Uh, they're in their hotel room, I think it is, and they have like a babysitter there. Oh, they're about yeah. to go to oh, dinner. Yep. Yep. And he says, he says, you know, let's not sit to next to that other couple because all they talk about is uh the cooking, the cooking lessons right. and stuff. Yeah. And then the next thing we see is they're sitting next to that couple. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know? Yep. Yep. So then here comes uh here comes Patrick. Mm-hmm. And right away you can tell that Bjorn admires Patrick, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, oh, idolizes him a little bit. I mean, yeah. yeah. Because <clears throat> we get a glimpse a little bit later of Bjorn's house uh home life. Yes. And we yeah. see that they just kind of live a kind of a boring everyday mm-hmm. life. Yep. Same routine, let's say. Not boring, yep. but routine. Yes, very good. Mhm. So he sees this guy, this guy, Patrick, who is confident. He's mm-hmm. outgoing, well-spoken. He actually stands up in front of an entire dinner of people. Yes. Yeah. And gets them all to toast and has them all laughing. Yeah. And yeah. Charming guy. Yeah. And then what happens is that after Bjorn goes and gets the bunny rabbit for his daughter, he mm-hmm. comes back and Patrick and Karen are talking to Louise. <laughs> yeah. And oh man, it's it's painful to watch Patrick manipulate Bjorn. Oh, oh gosh, yes. Oh my you, gosh, you went and got a rabbit. That's very heroic. Yeah, you know that's oh. what he says to Bjorn, and Bjorn's yeah. just like, what? <laughs> "Thank you." Yeah, he's so proud. He's never like been he's... called a hero. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's manipulation at its finest. Oof. Oof. And I feel like I feel like. Besides that, he they're just testing them. Um, mm-hmm. The first time we see Patrick mm-hmm. is when they're sitting at the pool. And oh, yeah. there's a lounge chair right next to Bjorn with all his stuff in it. Mm-hmm. And of all the lounge chairs around the pool, Patrick comes up and is like, can I take this chair? And you can tell Bjorn doesn't want to, but he's like, yeah, go ahead. Yep. He's, he's like a nice guy. Right. And so, oh. Uh, And that's just the beginning. Everything, man. Dude, for real. So I'm not going to lie. After watching this movie, and especially at the end, I mean, just seeing them like hurt the kids. Well, their kid. I was so mad. And I was Mm -hmm. like, and I really, I did do a, I looked at myself for this movie because we've talked about this on the podcast. I'm a yes man. I've always been a yes man. And I saw myself a little bit in that. And I went, not not with the kids. If anyone touched my kids, they're going to regret it. I'll tell you that much. But um, but see, and that, but that's, let me, let me just pause real quick. Yeah, lay it on me. That's the, that's the amazing thing about this movie. Mm-hmm. We all tell ourselves that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're in that situation, like, what are you going to do? It's, it's so interesting because you want to think that you're going to be like strong and you're going to. That you, if somebody was threatening your kid, if if mm-hmm. you know you you'd leave and you, but but man, like this yeah. this movie just shows that 
people will go to great lengths mm -hmm. not to offend somebody else. It's especially true. when the other people are manipulating the good, right. the nice people. Yeah. So keep going. But no, and so just doing like that look or kind of looking through at myself and being mad at this movie too because during that not at the movie but at the characters i'm like gosh fight back and so it kind of it inspired me a little bit as well so i've had you know lots on my plate and stuff so i just i recently just said no to something that i've been doing for a while oh for God. someone i was like i'm no <laughs> i'm sorry but i'm busy and i was nice <laughs> like but just things like that where i was like oh gosh it's okay to say no. So there, there was a little um, silver lining with this movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe that's not the right. Everybody term, but... watch Speak No Evil. Yeah, it's a good motivational. It's a yeah, it's like a motivational speaker uh, of a movie. No, but <laughs> but positive it was, reinforcement. It, yeah, exactly. But it was just interesting to see that I, I did have that moment where I was like, gosh, I need a. I need to stop being a yes man. <laughs> like it, it yeah. really did hit home. So just a interesting side thought. <laughs> no, it's that's not a side thought because I was wondering that. And I don't think you're that much of a yes man. I think oh, I remember a time when you used to be back oh, when yeah. you lived in LA. Yes. Uh, but over the years, I think, I think you've got to a point where you have a boundary Yeah. where yeah. you will, you will say no. Yeah, and you will yeah, you hold your foot true. down. You've done that with me on the podcast, and it's it's fine, you know, sorry, where you've been sorry. like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and I know you feel bad asking me, but you know it. It I know it takes a lot for you to come out and like be like, hey, you know, can we can we go biweekly for a little bit, you know, yeah. or can I take a month off? Mm -hmm. You know, I know I could tell it was you were you were so nice but you also know it's me so right I'm right understanding and whatever we're not going to get into our whole friendship and everything although this is this is great let's just say you have a big heart and i love you dearly and you're a good friend Mwah. thank you buddy thank you you too you too Thanks, <laughs> we, need, we need to have some love in this episode <laughs> well i mean it's weird though right i mean it's weird that this episode uh, and just quick aside, we're on Zoom, yeah. and right now my apartment looks like poltergeist. <laughs> I was wondering what was going on. I was like, "Are you in a rave right now?" I mean, Mary's just watching <laughs> a sitcom, and like my entire room is flashing blue. <laughs> what a pacifier in your mouth! So help me, me, <laughs> you, mommy. <laughs> Sorry, that's my poltergeist impression. That was good, dude. I love it. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's, there's, there's a, a hundred examples in this movie of Patrick and Karen, t uh, testing. Oh yeah. Patrick yes. and Karen testing Bjorn and Louise. Yes. Yep. Um, I feel like there's, there's this whole section of the movie where that's what they're doing. Yes. They're seeing how far they can push them until they put their foot down. Uh, and if they can push them a certain amount, but then For there's sure. a turning, there's a, there's a turning point in this movie. Mm -hmm. And do you know what part I'm thinking of? When they push them like to the point of where they need to stop. Uh, just a turning point in the movie where things just, it's, it's a, it's almost like a division between one part of the movie and the rest of the movie. Oh, and, is it the car ride home? Or, yeah, kind of. Or... Where the first time they leave and yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yep. And that's like, that was the most frustrating part. Like mm -hmm. even, even later when I was thinking about the movie and I was like, mm -hmm. okay, so this is the point of the movie is how Bjorn especially mm -hmm. refuses to say no, uh, refuses yes. to say no to Patrick. Mm -hmm. uh, his wife is a little bit stronger. It seems right. Yep. 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 But there's times when Bjorn needs to put his foot down when he needs to yes. say, "Don't do that." Um, no, I'm not paying for dinner. Ugh, that dinner. Oh gosh. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you'd think that after after they find their daughter, their young daughter, in the couple's bed, and Patrick yeah. is butt naked. Yeah. Even then, 
like it was frustrating because Louise, you want her to wake them up and be like pissed off. Like, what are yeah. you doing? Why is my daughter in your bed and your neck? But she doesn't. She picks her daughter up quietly. She doesn't want to wake them up. Yep. It's yep. just example after example of them yes. being too scared mm-hmm. to hurt these people's feelings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or to not seem at least a little bit gracious that they were invited over. Right. They just don't want that confrontation. But then the one part I still thought of, I was like, I don't know how believable it is Mm -hmm. that he would actually go back for a stuffed rabbit after everything that had already happened. Yeah. But but then I looked at that scene again. Mm -hmm. And at this point, he's still he's still terrified to disappoint somebody only this time it's his daughter. Mm -hmm. Very good. And he goes back to the house because of how bad he doesn't want to disappoint his daughter. That's true, dude. And it's the stupidest decision he makes. Yep. And it's when everything in the movie changes. Yep. Yeah, you're right. After, well, kind of, it's when it starts to change because then they go back and they have the conversation, Patrick and Karen, really work their ways on them Mm -hmm. and patrick's like why did you leave without saying goodbye you know what did we do what what did we do that was so bad yeah there's that (laughs) whole conversation and then he's like today is going to be a good day yeah man oh Uh foreshadowing yeah foreshadowing and then sorry but foreshadowing and then you see karen and Luis in the garden and karen's like with the scissors and she's like oh these scissors are so dull they don't cut anything, and you're just like, even uh, then, I felt some foreshadowing. Yeah. Gosh, dude, I forgot that line. That's horrifying. And I'm pretty sure those are the scissors yeah. that are involved later on. Ugh. <sighs> but yeah, I, f- I feel like there's that moment mm-hmm. in the movie where everything changes. And after Patrick takes Bjorn to the rock quarry, yeah, <laughs> where Another he's later, yeah, oh. Yes. Uh, and they do their screaming exercise. Mm-hmm. Something changes in Patrick and Karen as well. It's like they know that they have them. Yep. Yep. That's yeah, when that's true. Karen starts acting motherly mm-hmm. towards Agnes. Agnes. Yep. 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 That's where uh, Patrick is afraid, not afraid to come out with things like the fact that he's not a doctor, like you <laughs> yeah. said earlier. <laughs> yeah i was like jeez and they still um, stay and they still stay and his abuse of uh of uh abel mm-hmm. oh, that dance yeah. scene was horrifying too yeah it was horrifying it was ho- so hard to watch that's it was, that's yeah. the last scene i watched when i wa- did the rewatch with notes totally fair yep i even i even wrote a note i said i couldn't watch the last 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> i get it man yeah this i don't I can, uh, I will never probably watch. I don't think I'll ever watch this again. But again, it's it's just really well made. <laughs> I'd say the first half is worth watching again. Okay, just All so right. that you you know what's happening and you can see the manipulations even clearer. Okay, that's and fair. See I get Bjorn's that. character especially. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, I will say that the acting was phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. I have that note. It was. Fantastic. Everyone. Not just not just the acting, but the casting. Like yes. they cast the perfect people in the roles. Yep. You are right. Uh Patrick was the perfect amount of very like handsome and charming. Mm-hmm. Yep. But with just a slight undertone of un- uneasiness that you feel yes. about him. Yep. You know, he's the kind of guy that I would judge. If I was judging him, I would judge him as a guy who I would just somewhat be jealous of, like like Bjorn was, yeah. because he's everybody is just so loves him. Right. Yeah. Like he knows how to get on everybody's good side. Exactly. Yep. You can make a But I would also hate him for it. I would hate yeah. him for it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um and then of course, I mean the two wives, Louise, Karen. Mm-hmm. They were both fantastic too. Yep. Uh in their parts, but Bjorn. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. He, he was so that, good. And he plays that 
I is the term like the every man or whatever, you know, that the guy that yeah. like like we said, you know, he's he's got the routine and he played that part so well of like everything is it is what it is, you know, it's gonna be the same every day for the rest of my life. And okay, oh well. You yeah. know, and he, he just he did play that part so well. And so when he did, but then you see him come out of his shell, like especially the rock quarry. And then right after that, they run to the pool and he's excited and he's happy and he's and he just played it so well as that that guy that feels like he has like a chance or feels like he has yeah hope. You know what I mean? And he yeah, he played it beautifully. Played it beautifully. But... And the wives are laughing from the kitchen window. Yep. yep. And it's just yep. like, man, that is so painful to watch especially the second time because you oh, just know that that's the last moment of happiness he's about to have. Oh yeah, dude. And it's fake happiness. It's manipulated happiness. Horrible. Uh, but yeah, he, the actor, his name is Morton, Morton Burian. And mm -hmm. he does this thing with his eyebrows where he always looks nice, but concerned at the same time. <laughs> that's a good way to describe that. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, yeah, he just plays this nice guy, mm -hmm. and he does it perfectly. Yes. Um, so Louise, his wife, is played by Sitzel Siem Koch. Mm -hmm. uh, Patrick is played wonderfully by Fedja Van Hewitt. Mm -hmm. And then Karen is played by Karina Smolders. Yes. Which is the easiest to say. Yeah. And uh, I will say, she yeah. she scared the crap out of me in that car. When we see her... Mm. come to life when she's holding you know i mean the, during the horrifying scene i was like she played it and i you know i mean she's a great actress which yeah. is fantastic but watching her i was like that's she, she is pure evil i mean i remember looking yeah. at her and just being disgusted with her and i'm like wow she's good like, like how <laughs> you could know you what do I mean? this yeah you know? but she just played it so well that you're just i just was like you're a gross person and you got to take a step back. Wow. She's a really good actress. Good for her. No, they're, uh, they're, but, yeah. they are. They're disgusting. They are. Yeah. The, they are more evil than most of the villains in any horror movies we've seen. Agreed. Yep. And one of the most haunting moments, and it has to do with her, is after mm -hmm. they stone uh, Bjorn and Karen. And then she uh -huh. just lovingly walks over and puts her head on Patrick's chest. Yes. Like, ah. Like, uh, that was a good night, yeah. you know, like a romantic Oof. moment after that. Yeah. Dark, man. Oh, I hated it. I hated yeah. it so much. Yeah. Um, I hate it. I hated this movie, but it was I know. brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that it's, it's so hard to describe this movie because you want to be positive with how it's made and everything, but you're just, it's that last half hour that just kills you. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, and even they, I'm glad the movie doesn't fall into certain tropes. Mm -hmm. Like, wait, remind me, they get in the car the second time. Does the car start right away? Um, I think it did. Yeah, okay. I think it did. And then it just, it, but stops later. Yeah, because they get stuck. Right. But yeah, that's yeah. the thing, like. Uh, see, I think I thought in my head that the car definitely wasn't going to start the second time. Right. But I thought it was going to be because Patrick messed with the car. Right. Right. But they actually start driving away. Mm -mm. And then, oh, Bjorn. I mean, here's the thing. He goes down that side road. Yes. Which yep. is where we the car the gets car stuck. Car behind yeah, him. exactly. Yep. So somehow I think Patrick would have gotten him somehow anyway. Right. They would have they would have run the car off the road or something. Right. Yep. That's what I thought too. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh the last thing the last thing I have to talk about, and this is a this is a positive thing about the movie. Not <laughs> about the story or anything, but right. yeah. um yeah. the score, the music score. Ooh, yeah. I was very that it struck me. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. The, the score is done by uh, a person named Suna Koter Kolster. Right on. And I'm sure you you could say that with a Danish accent, and it sounds right. a lot cooler. But right. <laughs> I loved first of all, like right at the beginning of the movie, mm -hmm. 
the score comes up and a lot of times when the score comes up they did mm-hmm. this brilliant thing where all the other audio would go away oh. and like you have the 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 recital when they're watching agnes perform right yeah, yeah. with her class there's no audio of the recital it's just this ominous score this foreboding mm-hmm. score that's like you're right you're watching something that is not going to end well right yeah yep. and i feel like for in one of the first times i've ever really noticed this in a movie the score told us what was going to happen in this movie cuz there's the moment when that we've talked about when mm-hmm. they're driving away the first time and agnes can't find her teddy bear mm-hmm. the moment that bjorn decides to turn around and he goes to turn the car around the yep. score comes up and it's just the score right then i was like the first time i saw this not even the second time but the first mm-hmm. time i was watching it i was like dude that music just told me that this is the this is the end of them yes like this Very was good. the moment that he made the worst choice he could ever make yeah they could have gotten away if he had kept driving yep but the fact that he turned around that just spelled their doom yep and the music told me that and I honestly didn't think I was going to be able to listen to the score mm-hmm. after the first yeah. time I watched this. I was like, can I listen to this like in my car? <laughs> but then I started listening to it. And especially after I started to appreciate the movie more, mm-hmm. I started to think, you know, I think I can listen to this away nice. from the movie. Yeah, I I highly recommend everybody go out there and look up the soundtrack on Spotify or Apple Music. Nice. It's really, uh, it's a really, really original Mm -hmm. it's and it but it's just really good so i have i have one more praise too then real quick please and that would be the cinematography oh uh there was a couple shots i think it's when they're at the park Mm -hmm. or they're hiking there's something i can't remember what um but there was a few moments where i just was like whoa like that's a really beautiful shot yeah i think it must it was in a field because it was green and it was very pretty but yeah, that would be shots. the first time that they go like walking together. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, and they see they like they're taking pictures of the windmill. But that scene, that's another the score and the cinematography together mm. there. Nice, because yep, yep, that's yep. another part where all sounds go away. Yeah, and the music comes up. The score is there and present, and it's just like they're walking in a beautiful field that mm-hmm. should be like nice in any other movie. There'd be like some maybe some nice music that disarms you, that makes you think that everything's okay. But Mm -hmm. at no point in this movie does the music make you think that anything is going to be okay. Right. Yeah, it's true. That is very true. And I felt throughout the entire movie that this wasn't going to end well for them. Right. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And I wonder if the music was part of that. I think so. I think that's a really good point. Besides just true. Everybody saying how disturbing this movie right. is. You kind of when people <laughs> say that, you kind of know it's not going to. Yeah. Um, we did have a really funny Twitter comment today that I wanted to, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say before before we move on. Uh, yes. Uh, you know, I posted that we we're going to do this movie next week, and mm-hmm. a guy named Adam McDonald, he his Twitter handle is at a d m a c o n t w i t, which is Ad McContwit. Um, he said it wasn't a laugh a minute kind of movie, but certainly very good. And something about that, just saying, well, it wasn't a laugh a minute kind of movie. <laughs> this made me laugh out loud. So <laughs> it I is kind of brilliant. That's I wanted awesome. to say that. Are you ready for three questions? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would cross the bridge of death must answer me these questions, three. Okay. Uh, question number one, Andrew, <laughs> the worst question ever. Yeah. Um, what did you think was the best death or kill in this movie? I mean, really, there's only one that you see, and it's two people being stoned to death. <laughs> so that, <laughs> well, unless you wanted to pick Abel. Ugh. Right, yeah, and I'm I'm just saying we see this once and it, it, none of them are good. I Here's mean, the thing. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to make this answer interesting. Okay, okay. I am going to go with Abel. Okay. 
because they did it tastefully. They did it the way yeah. they should have done uh, Agnes's tongue scene. Yes. Yep. Yep. Like Off you screen. saw the aftermath. You didn't see him die. You saw right. the aftermath. And that's how the death of a child should be treated yeah. in a movie like this. In a movie. And it still had impact. Yep. Yeah. You're that's still true. like, holy crap. Yeah. So Maybe I'm going to go, go with that, that. too. <laughs> Switch. Because honestly, that stoning is not, Uh-oh. It's not fun. Uh oh. You just moved around and did something. Oh, sorry. I have this on a table. Sorry. Ooh. Don't, don't, don't. You said you weren't going to rock your chair. <laughs> I'll sit still. Number two. <laughs> yes. Did you think this movie was scary? So, yeah, I did. I mean, it's, this is a, it's dark, man. And there are people that are manipulators like that. And it's, so it kind of has that realistic, gritty horror to it. So I would, call this scary man yeah is this movie scarier because you're a father yes for sure yeah 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 because i'm not i just have cats and i don't want anybody to cut off my cat's tongue either but no gosh no, the gravy. <laughs> <laughs> what um, about you then so did you think it was i thought it was disturbing that maybe that's the word for no it. no a... i mean no but see you're different you're a father right so right, it right. might be scary to you for me, I was just very uncomfortable. Right. And I got more uncomfortable as the movie went on. Yes. And uh, in that way, but if I was a parent, mm -hmm. I think it would scare me. I would, it would absolutely scare me knowing that there's people like that out there and just seeing right. evidence of it in a movie like this. Right. That's true. Because, yeah. I mean, people take kids off the street every day. And, you know, this is just a brutal way of showing that stuff like this happens like it's even right. worse i don't know i don't know yeah no, i don't want to get, get into it. it yeah question number three <sighs> <laughs> did you tell me how much you did not have fun with horror <laughs> <laughs> i'd say i had fun up to about <clears throat> the, that like you said that 30 minute mark on <laughs> and then it's not very fun <laughs> i don't right, think any again, any part of this movie no was you're right it's no you can you don't have to yes ma'am me Sorry. If you thought part of it was fun. No, that's not the word, though. I don't <laughs> want to use fun because it's not a fun movie. You don't sit there no. and go like, oh, this is so fun. Um, it's not a laugh a minute. But uh, <laughs> no. but it's it like it's, I mean, it's a it's a great movie. Yeah. No, it's, it's a great just, movie. There's that. There's just some darkness. It's so hard to describe this movie, man. It really is. Difficult. It's hard to recommend it, too. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's just because I mean, it's it's a great movie. It's a brilliant movie. But do I would I recommend it to somebody that hasn't seen it? Uh, you know, it's according to who they are. Right. Like yeah. Our yeah. friend of the show, Edward, I told him you should see this movie because I know oh, he has sure. a high tolerance for disturbing things. He can handle this one. Yeah. Yeah. But yep. other people, I would be like, mm, yeah, it's according to what you can handle. I would not have my wife watch this one. No, 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 no. I mean, she's she's probably listening to this right now, disturbed. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> let's let's brighten things up and find out what we're watching next week, buddy. Yes. And uh, and and what's your name? Can you say who you hate? I will have some difficulty speaking, so if he feels some sort of uh, pressure, he can get a little insecure. Ah. Oh, but there is no pressure at all. <laughs> no. And who is this? Minus. Minus? I almost just lost it, so Bjorn went to find it. You went to find the rabbit? Yes. It's very heroic of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, no, I'm serious. Respect. Well, thanks. You're very welcome. So, did you guys have lunch yet? <laughs> By the way, where are you guys? All right, friend, I'm, I'm in need for something... I just want to talk about something different. I feel like we covered everything that was dark, and now let's just let's just enjoy the conversation. I got you. I, I got you, you, buddy. I I need to know, and I think the people need to know. What are we watching next, my man? I got I got you, baby bear. <laughs> <laughs> um, this wasn't really on purpose. I mm -hmm. had kind of picked this before I even watched Speak No Evil. Okay. Um and uh. But it, it ended up working out because instead of going straight from a really dark, depressing, disturbing horror movie into another 
real like horror movie, mm-hmm. fun or not. Right. I decided that it was time that we watch The Menu. Yes. Um, starring Anya Taylor Joy. Uh I forget <laughs> I don't have Ray anything. Fiennes. Ray Fiennes. Yeah, Ray Fine. No, yeah, but who directed it? I don't have that in front of me. Well, Hang on. <laughs> IMDB. I'm here. I'm here. I'm going there. I'm quick. I'm quick. My computer's right next to me. Mark Mylod. Thank you. Nice. And produced, I looked by Will Farrell and Adam yes. McKay. Which yes. Is, I was thought that's very interesting for this, this genre, movie. I mean, this movie's been getting a lot of word of mouth. Mm-hmm. And I've been very curious about it. I've kept yeah. I've kept away from it. I don't really know much of what it's about. Mm-hmm. Um, just that it's about people at a restaurant. Yep. And Ray Fines yeah. is a top chef. He's a very well respected chef. So right. that's all I know. Um and from what I understand, it's not it can be considered like horror adjacent. Okay. You know? Cool. Yep. So yep. I'm I'm curious to find out how it fits into the horror genre because right. people do say it is horror but okay yeah i'm excited i just don't know how so yeah so the cast. menu yeah i'm excited man um for those out there the menu is streaming right now on hbo max nice yeah uh, nice. you can all obviously also rent or purchase it so but Great. hbo max for those that want to stream it um yeah so yay <laughs> That was episode 77, buddy. We did it. I didn't we know did. if we'd be able to. <laughs> we, got we, did it. It. We, we got through it. We got through, through it. it. We're still here. Uh, I still get to look at your beautiful face. What can I, I was just about? I was just scratching my nose when you said that. And my, and my room is poltergeisting. Yep. <laughs> with the with the bright flashing Honestly, blue lights. That, that light is pretty sweet. Yeah. And there goes my now you get to see my girlfriend walk by. Yep. Hi, you Mary. get to see oh, Mary. Hi, Mary. <laughs> no, she can't hear you. <laughs> well, she's got her earplugs in anyway, so. Oh. <laughs> anyway, buddy, I love you. I love you, buddy. I love uh, you. We love everybody out there. We, yes. uh, I mean, we say it a lot, but mm. even now, we this podcast is doing better than it's ever done. Yeah. People are listening. Yes. So if you, if, whoever's out there, if you're still listening to this episode, thank you so much. <laughs> yes thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you we love you and yes. maybe we should remember to thank people at the beginning of next episode well before they turn it off <laughs> right <laughs> anyway uh, buddy you have a wonderful uh day and night you as well and take care of yourself you take care of yourself <laughs> <laughs> and as i always like to say goodbye you let me take off your clothes <laughs>